Are you interested in advancing your career in cloud computing? Look no further than AZ900 or Microsoft Azure Fundamental Exam. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this episode 33, I have gathered 20 latest questions that are very similar to those that have appeared in the recent AZ900 exams. And friends, not only you will get the opportunity to test your knowledge, but I will also share some valuable Azure concepts, Microsoft documentation to help you self-learn and validate the answers. And by the end of this episode, you will feel more confident and prepared to pass AZ900 exam with flying colors. And please do not miss to watch the previous parts of this series. 620 questions on AZ900 are already covered. So let's begin part 33 with question number 621. It says that your company want to migrate its web server and database server to Microsoft Azure. The architecture diagram is shown below. You must ensure that the traffic restrictions are in place so that the database server can only communicate with the web server. Which of the following would you recommend for implementing these restrictions? So here you can observe we have one front-end subnet and we also have one back-end subnet. Now the front-end subnet also consists of public-facing load balancer which is in turn consisting of web server virtual machine and one DNS as well. And then in the backend subnet, you can see we have one internal load balancer. Please observe the difference. In the front end subnet, we have public load balancer. In the backend subnet though, we have internal load balancer. And then we also have database server virtual machines and DC virtual machine. Now let's check out the options given. We have network security groups, application security groups and a local network gateway. And the last one is a virtual private gateway. So which amongst these my friends you think that it will ensure that the traffic restrictions are in place so that the database server can only communicate with the web server. And the correct answer for this question is option A network security groups. Moving on with the question number 622 it says the Azure service displays recent activities by the virtual machine including any configuration changes and when it was stopped and started. And the services that are given are Azure Monitor, Activity Log, Azure Advisor and Azure Agent. The correct answer for this question is option B, Activity Log. So let's understand what is Activity Log on this Microsoft documentation that is titled as Monitor Azure Virtual Machine. Here in this section, you can see that we are given some details on Activity Log. Yes, here it is. It says that the Activity Log displays recent activities by the virtual machine, including any configuration changes when it was stopped and started. And this documentation validates that our answer is correct. Let's move on to the question number 623. It says that you can view activity log in the Azure portal. Yes or no? And the correct answer, my friends, is yes. Coming up next is question number 624. It says that a company is planning to use Azure Synapse Analytics for hosting their sales historical data. Which of the following is a feature of Azure Synapse SQL architecture? Your options are high availability, scalability, disaster recovery and visualization. And the correct answer for this question is my friends, option B, scalability. And by the way, how many of you know that Azure Synapse SQL formerly was called Azure SQL Data Warehouse? Although my friends, you won't be getting any questions on Azure SQL Data Warehouse. But of course, it's good to know because many of us might be coming from the Data Warehouse background and then it's very easy to relate the concepts. Moving on to the question number 625, it says that you can create a diagnostic setting to send activity log to a log analytics workspace where you can view events over time or analyze them with the other collected data. Yes or no? And the correct answer, my friends, is yes. Coming up next is question number 626 that says that you can collect Windows event log data sources with log analytics agent. Yes or no? And the correct answer, my friends, is yes. And in case my friends, you want to understand more on how to collect Windows event log data sources with log analytics agent, then this is the Microsoft documentation. Here you can read that Windows event logs are one of the most common data sources for log analytics agent on Windows virtual machines because many application write to the Windows event log. Here you can also see that you can collect events from the standard logs such as system and application and any custom logs created by the application you need to monitor. Here you can see the architecture of the same. Also, you can understand how to configure Windows event log. The links to all the documentation as always is given in the description box. 
Now let's move on to the question number 627 that says that your company has several resources hosted in Azure. They want to have comprehensive solution for collecting, analyzing and acting on telemetry from the Azure cloud. Which of the following service would you use for this requirement? Your options are Azure Event Hubs, Azure Analysis Services, Azure Advisor and the last one is Azure Monitor. And the correct answer my friends is option D, Azure Monitor. So what is Azure Monitor? Well, Azure Monitor delivers a comprehensive solution for collecting, analyzing and acting on telemetry from your cloud and on-premises environment. And thus it maximizes the availability and performance of your application and services. And friends, while I teach you all these questions and answers, my suggestion is always to pause the video read the question, read all the options that you have and before you see what I have picked as an answer, always try to put your answer on a piece of paper and then validate your answer with the one I have given. This will really boost your confidence in the real exam. And in case my friends you feel the answer picked by me is not correct, please let me know in the comment section or you can also email us at connect us at the rate the techblackboard.com. But for now, let's move on to the question number 628 that says your company wants to use Azure storage account. Now they have following requirement that storage account should automatically replicate data to the secondary region. Now the solution given is that configuring the read access geo redundant storage account as it automatically replicate data to the secondary region. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And the correct answer my friends is yes. And this is because read access geo redundant storage account is most capable of replicating your data to the secondary region. Moving on with the question number 629 that says a company wants to ensure that the users in their company are authenticated when they access resources defined in their Microsoft Azure account. Which of the following is the correct definition of authentication? The first option given is this specifies the type of service you can use in Azure. The second option is this specifies the type of data you can use in Azure. The third one says this is the act of providing legitimate credentials. And the last one is this specifies what you can do in Azure. And the correct answer for this question is option C. This is an act of providing legitimate credentials. And this is because my friends authentication is a process of proving you are what you say you are. Authentication is also sometimes shortened as AuthN. And with that piece of knowledge, let's move to the next question. Question number 630 says that your company has 10 offices and you plan to generate several billing reports from the Azure portal. Now each report will contain Azure resource utilization of each office. Which Azure resource manager feature should you use before you generate the reports? Your options are tags, templates, logs or policies. And the correct answer my friends is option A tax. And just in case my friends you do not know, you can use resource tags to label Azure resources. What are tags? Well tags are the metadata elements attached to the resources. And friends always remember tags consist of pairs of key value strings. So just to give you more clarity in this question, we would tag each resource with the tag to identify each office. So for example, you have many offices like office one, office two. So what we can do is we tag each resource with the location tag. Let's say location equals to office one. Similarly, you can tag all the resources with the location location tag, office 1, 2 and so on and so forth. When all the Azure resources are tagged, then you can generate reports to list all the resources based on their value of the tag. For example, let's say we want to pull out the billing reports of all the resources which are tagged with office 1. And similarly, my friends, the question can also ask you that suppose you have a big company with multiple departments and you as a CEO of the company, you want to control the cost based on each department. In this case, you can label the resources used by a certain department, for example, HR department, finance department or IT department. In this way, you would be able to understand the cost spends of each department. So friends, in this way, you can use tags in many different ways. And one more way to use tags could be based on different environments. For example, you have test environment or production environment. So you can label the resources 
based on the environment they are used in. So I hope you got a fair idea that tags are quite flexible and they can be used in multiple ways. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 631 says that you need to configure an Azure solution that meets the following requirement. The first one is secure website from attacks. The second one is generate reports that contain detail of attempted attacks. What should you include in the solution? Your options are Azure firewalls, a network security group, Azure information protection and the last one is DDoS protection. The correct answer my friends for this question is option D DDoS protection. So friends DDoS is a type of attack that tries to exhaust application resources and the goal of these DDoS attacks is to affect the application's availability and its ability to handle legitimate requests. So basically these DDoS attacks will choke your application bandwidth so that it cannot handle the requests coming from the legitimate users. Moving on with the question number 632, it says a company wants to create multiple data stores in Microsoft Azure. They want to have storage layers that can be used to store data that is infrequently used. Please note the important keyword infrequently used. Which of the following storage tiers for Azure Blob Storage would be suitable for this requirement? And please note you have to choose two answers from the options given below. What are the options? We have premium storage, hot storage, cool storage and archive storage. The correct answer for this question is option C and option D cool storage and archive storage. So just to enhance your knowledge hot storage or hot storage tier is optimized for storing data that is accessed frequently. Moving on to the cool storage we have optimized for storing data that is infrequently accessed and stored for at least 30 days. And coming to the archive tier, this is optimized for storing data that is rarely accessed and stored for at least 180 days with the flexible latency requirements. And please remember my friends these days because sometimes Microsoft will specify the number of days and based on that you have to pick the right answer. So let's move on to the next question. Question number 633 says that an IT engineer needs to create a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure. Currently the IT engineer has Android based workstation. And further it says currently the IT engineer has an Android OS based workstation. Which of the following can the IT engineer use to create the desired virtual machine in Azure? Your options are Microsoft Power Apps, Azure Cloud Shell, Azure PowerShell and the last one is Azure CLI. And the correct answers for this question is option B Azure Cloud Shell and option C Azure PowerShell. Let's jump to the question number 634. It says your company is planning on using Azure AD for authentication of the resources defined in Azure. Now does Azure AD have the built-in capabilities for securing authentication and authorization to the resources? Yes or no? And the correct answer my friends is yes. And why so? Because Azure Active Directory is Microsoft cloud based identity and access management service which helps your employees sign in and access resources such as Microsoft Office 365, the Azure portal and thousands of other SaaS applications with built in capabilities for securing both authentication and authorization. And thus it's a very important service altogether. And now my friends let's take few questions on Azure free account. Not only these questions may come in the Azure AZ-900 exam but it will also give you some clarity on your doubt on getting started to learn Microsoft Azure using Azure free account. So here comes the question number 635. It says a company is planning on setting up Azure free account. Does the basic support plan comes along with the Azure free account? Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. Question number 636 says a company is planning on using their Microsoft free Azure account for hosting production based resources. Does the Azure free account allows you to host production based resources? Yes or no? And the correct answer my friends is yes. And friends, I'm sure that many of you are already confused that should I use Azure free account for hosting production based resources. So why not validate our answer with the Microsoft documentation only? Let's go. So here I am on the Microsoft FAQ page or frequently asked question. 
here you can read the question it says can the azure free account be used for production or development only and what microsoft answer is that azure free account provides access to all the azure services and does not block customers from building their ideas into production the azure free account includes certain types of specific services and certain amounts for those services for free to enable your production scenarios you may need to use resources beyond the free amount so if you choose to move to the pay as you go you will be billed for those additional resources at pay as you go rates so putting this all in simple words you can most definitely use azure free account for production based resources but please be aware that you only have 200 dollars of credit in the free account and once that's exhausted you must move to the pay as you go and now let's move on to the question number 637 it says that you can apply any of your 200 dollar credit towards azure marketplace offers yes or no and the correct answer my friends is no the reason is that your credit cannot be applied to azure marketplace offers however many of the azure marketplace partners offer free trials or free tier plans for their solution so of course you can taste different solution with the free trials or free tier plan but definitely you cannot use your 200 dollar credit to purchase different solutions from azure marketplace and with that let's jump on to the question number 638 it says that can you spend your credit on azure spot virtual machines yes or no and the correct answer my friends is no so it's important to understand there are definitely some restrictions on what you can do with the free azure credit that you get with the free azure account for example one of them is spot virtual machines so you cannot buy spot virtual machines with the free credit provided in your free account but once you have used your free credit then you can move to the pay as you go and purchase spot virtual machines at deep discount compared to the pay as you go pricing for virtual machines and here comes question number 639 it says can you use your azure hybrid benefit within the azure free account yes or no and the correct answer is no so please understand that azure hybrid benefit cannot be combined with free credit if you move to the pay as you go pricing at the end of your first 30 days or after you have spent the credit then you will be able to use azure hybrid benefit so please remember all this stuff around the azure free account my friends it will not only help you in the az 900 exam but also will help you when you're actually practicing azure in the free account and now comes question number 640 that says geo redundant storage or gras duplicates information to the secondary place over multiple data centers that are located many kilometers apart yes or no and the correct answer for this question my friends is yes and a very important concept once again grs can replicate data from primary source and can transfer it to the secondary source even if the two places are far away from each other so thanks for tuning in to our azure question and answer video i hope you find it helpful in your journey to mastering microsoft azure and friends be sure to check the links in the description box for more resources and information and in case you have any other questions or topic that you want us to cover please let me know in the comment section and friends as always if you find this video useful please hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up and that's all for today until next time stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching